How the Dinosaurs Went Extinct 101 Today, we learn about the extinction of the dinosaurs. How did an asteroid, climate change, tectonic plates, and volcanoes combine to cause these dominant creatures to suddenly disappear from the face of the Earth? I will also explain how birds and the mammals survived this extinction event. Learn more with me on Science Talk TV. Our story begins 66 million years ago. Dinosaurs dominate the Earth. There are the herbivores, like the Triceratops, and they are preyed upon by monstrous predators like the Tyrannosaurus rex. Ancient reptiles, often confused for dinosaurs, like the mesosaurs, roam the seas and the pterodactyls reign terror from above. In what will become modern day India, two huge magma plumes are bubbling to the surface. These lava plumes are releasing ash and sulfur dioxide into the upper atmosphere. As these molecules oxidize, they form particles that reflect heat back out into space. This is one of the largest volcanic events in the history of the Earth, and you can see evidence of it today in the Deccan Traps of India. The sheer amount of lava released by these plumes covers 1.5 million square kilometers with lava rock up to two kilometers deep. The lava covers more area than America's largest state, Alaska. Over the next 30,000 years, volcanic activity cools Earth about 8 degrees Celsius. This quick and drastic global cooling event is the beginning of our mass extinction. It is called the Cretaceous Paleogene Extinction, the KPG extinction for short. Most scientists agree that dinosaurs are neither warm-blooded nor cold-blooded. They likely are partway through evolving from being cold-blooded, like reptiles, and they're on the way to becoming warm-blooded, like birds. Because dinosaurs can't regulate their own body temperatures very well, they are struggling to adapt to the freezing environment and starting to disappear. Suddenly, one of the worst timed coincidences in the history of the world occurs. A giant metallic asteroid is speeding towards Earth. It is over 10 kilometers in diameter, about the size of Manhattan. It is traveling at 70,000 kilometers per hour when it enters Earth's atmosphere. It burns brighter than the sun as it collides with the air around it, and finally impacts shallow water off the Gulf of Mexico. The impact is so violent that it releases more energy than 10 billion Hiroshima atomic bombs. The Gulf of Mexico immediately evaporates, and the shockwave causes earthquakes across all of North America. A cloud of debris moving at 15,000 kilometers per hour blasts around Earth in a matter of minutes. It temporarily raises the temperature of all of Earth to somewhere between 150 and 300 degrees Celsius, depending on location. This heat blast, while deadly hot, only lasts for a few minutes and is not the reason the dinosaurs go extinct. The heat doesn't actually kill most plants or most dinosaurs because it's so short-lived. The problem is that the incredible heat instantly vaporizes the asteroid and the ground around it. It throws an incredible amount of debris into the atmosphere worldwide, partially blocking out the sun 
for the next several years. By the time the debris settles, 60% of all plants are extinct. This causes a chain reaction where the plant eaters die next, the meat eaters follow quickly after, and there's a huge global food shortage. Adding to the food shortage problem, the globe continues to cool at least another 3 degrees Celsius as the asteroid's dust cloud compounds with the volcanic activities to further block out the sun. Earth is becoming a very dark and cold place. As the dust settles, it covers the globe in a layer of sedimentary rock with a shockingly high level of iridium. Iridium is very rare on Earth and is concentrated 100 times higher than normal in the rock layers dating to this time period, 65.5 million years ago. Iridium is common in asteroids, however, and this is strong evidence that the global blacking out of the sun was caused by an asteroid impact, not volcanic ash. Today, geologists can see this event as a distinct line. It is called the KPG boundary and represents the end of the Cretaceous period. When excavating above the KPG boundary, we find little evidence of dinosaurs. But when we look below the KPG boundary, we find dinosaur fossils everywhere. The distinct line is the dust that settled from the asteroid impact 65.5 million years ago. And we see this pattern worldwide. A final nail in the coffin for the dinosaurs was caused by plate tectonics and continental drift. If you don't understand plate tectonics, take a look at my video up here where I have already explained it. At the same time as the volcanic eruptions, asteroid impact, and global cooling, our KPG extinction event gets more ammunition. Sea floors are drifting down deeper. This is causing the water in the seas and the shores on the continental shelves to recede dramatically. It is similar to pulling the plug out in a bathtub, and that bathtub is the ocean. In our story, 65.5 million years ago, Europe is covered in about 100 meters of ocean water. The coastlines are pulling back, trapping marine reptiles like the Mosasars and sharks into ever-shrinking pools. Today, Europe is all above sea level. Not only are entire oceans drying up, but the water chemistry, currents, and temperatures are all changing as well. Most marine animals don't have time to adapt to the changing environment. 98% of the corals, 30% of the sharks, and many aquatic reptiles die off. You can even find fossils of these ancient sea creatures above ground in Europe today. This type of change in ocean levels has also contributed to a previous mass extinction. 96% of all species were lost 252 million years ago in an event called the Great Dying. Luckily for us humans, the KPG extinction event 66 million years ago only kills about 70% of all species. During this extinction, 99.9% .9 of the dinosaurs are wiped off the face of the earth, but some of one clade called the theropods survive. Theropods' main traits are two legs, hollow bones, and three toes. The T-Rex and the Velociraptor are examples of the larger theropods. 
Their huge appetites and strictly carnivorous diets lead to a quick extinction in the new cold and dark world. The smaller theropods are struggling, but they are surviving and evolving to become even smaller. They are omnivores, meaning they can eat anything, and they only require less than 1% of the calories a T-Rex would to survive a famine. The theropods become warm-blooded, evolve lighter feathers, and master flight. They are now able to travel great distances in search of food, which allows them to survive the famine during the KPG extinction event. We know them as birds today. Evolving alongside the birds are the ancestors of modern humans who also survived the KPG extinction event. Our great 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 grandparents were shrew like mammals. They survived the carnivorous dinosaurs by becoming smaller and burrowing. Only being the size of a mouse is evolutionary good luck during the extinction event. Because, like the birds, our ancestors do not require much food. Hair, warm blood, omnivorous diets, and high intelligence allow the mammals to survive the cold and dark environment. When the dust settles, we have the rise of the mammals. With the carnivorous dinosaurs gone, mammals evolve into all sorts of sizes and forms. They take to the air and the oceans. Mammals will dominate the land for the foreseeable future. All of you watching are currently experiencing the next great extinction event, which is caused by human activity. Will we join the dinosaurs as a once great species lost to time? Last episode was Biomimicry 101, innovation inspired by nature. Check out more of my 101 science education videos in this playlist up here. I also cover cool animal facts and science news. Thank you for watching Science Talk TV.